Thank you very much, Rob. I'm, it's a great pleasure for me to be here to address this Washington County Forum. I might note that actually I'm not an entirely new face to the forum. And I looked at my calendar and actually in March of 2012, I had the opportunity to address the forum once before. And I would tell you that there is a very different trimet right now because of some of the progress that we've made over those last three years. Progress in a couple of ways. One is in a landmark agreement between TriMet and its union, the ATU, that for the first time in a long time has really put solid ground under our feet financially so that we are financially stable as an organization. I can tell you that with firm commitment. And second is because our local economy is improving and that is helping all of us, including uh, TriMet, uh, expand our services to our customers and we're very pleased about that. The second thing I wanted to mention is that I know right now this is a very auspicious day because our Oregon Ducks are on the brink of a national championship. And I know where we're at right now, Aloha has some particular uh, ownership of that team and the members of it, and I just wanted to acknowledge that and uh, obviously go Ducks is the word of the day. I do want to talk a little bit about the background of TriMet, a little bit about the organization, because it is a unique enterprise uh, compared to many public agencies. First of all, we are uh, a very important partner. We are in a very important partnership with businesses. Uh, if business is healthy, TriMet is generally healthy. Uh, when you look at a, sort of the big picture, about 23% of our revenue comes from the fares that our customers pay. 54% of our revenue comes from a payroll tax that businesses in the Tri-County region pay. And about the rest, another 25% or so, actually comes from grants from the federal government or um, dribs and drabs from, from the state of Oregon. Um, but it is also a unique enterprise in that it is, we, uh, our customers actually uh, lead with their wallets every day. People pay to ride the system, and so we are in the business of attracting customers to our system. And in that, I think I'll share with you some great successes as we go through these remarks. The other thing I wanted to emphasize today is that TriMet is not a single purpose transportation transit provider. We actually have four missions that I think it's important to, um, to spell out. One is what you normally would think about our, our, our buses and our rail system doing, which is to get employees to work and customers to businesses. The second is to ease congestion by shaving off demand on the highways, particularly during the peak hours, so that commuters and our, uh, our businesses can move goods during those particular periods of time. Third is we provide a critical service to seniors and people with disabilities and young people and people who don't have other alternatives to enjoy the benefits of our community and the mobility around our community. And fourth, we're an important tool for the region in shaping the region so that we can address growth in smart ways that avoid some of the uh, negative uh, repercussions of growth like sprawl into our farms and forest land and air pollution. So let me review how we're doing in relation to each of those missions, because I think it's kind of a progress report, if you will, a report card on how TriMet is doing. First, in terms of getting employees to work and, and customers to businesses, I would share with you that today, 320,000 times somebody will cross the threshold of a TriMet bus or train. If you put that on an annual basis, 100 million times a year, somebody will step across the threshold of a TriMet bus or train. Those are enormous numbers. And during the last 15 years, we've even gotten smarter about how we do that service. With more efficient services, we're actually carrying, uh, since um, the year 2000, about 22% more customers and not putting a lot more service on the street and doing that. Second uh, mission I talked about was easing congestion, shaving the peaks of the peak hour off. 
And I would also note, and this relates to the first mission as well, is that if you look at us compared to our peers, you look at TriMet compared to other, um, other regions, we're number nine in the nation in per capita ridership. Number nine in the nation. And remember, we're about the 24th largest area in terms of population. So you can clearly say that we uh, outbox our weight class when it comes to transit ridership overall. Indeed, about 78% of the people who ride TriMet have a car at home, have a choice. Uh, and that's actually a very high percentage for a transit system like ours. So we are offering uh, a quality service to a number of people who find it a very advantageous way to deal with their uh, commutes or travel. Um, I'd also just note that we're focused on improving service in some of the busiest corridors. Um, one thing that you might also note, some independent studies, Texas Transit Institute, for example, Transportation Institute, noted that TriMet saves the region and local businesses about $150 million a year just in reduced uh, congestion costs. Um, the West Side Max, just as an example, can carry the equivalent of two and a half lanes of traffic. So we are building for the future with added capacity um, uh, throughout the system. Now, I would be the first to tell you that there's no way to completely solve the issues of congestion, short of a, an economic depression. We got a little too close to that in 2009, um, but we all, we all saw uh, traffic growth uh, diminish at that point in time, but obviously with the growth of our region, we're beginning to see uh, travel increasing again. The third uh, mission I talked about was to really keep all of our citizens mobile. Uh, that means people with disabilities, that means seniors, that means students, people who don't have a car, who don't have access to a car, or don't want access to a car. Um, and I would just tell you that TriMet serves millions of rides every year for those uh, por portions of our community. Uh, in particular, our Lyft service, which offers the door-to-door -door service for people who can't use our normal uh, uh, service, whether they be people with disabilities or seniors, um, they, that, that service provides over a million rides a year. Now, I would be the first to tell you that that's not cheap and that's not easy, but it is absolutely essential to keep those, uh, those people active in our society and providing them access to important services like health care, um, like um, uh, shopping opportunities and, and uh, activities of daily life. The fourth um, mission I noted was helping to shape our region. And I would note that we are working with all of your uh, jurisdictions here in Washington County, the county, the cities, many other parts of the region, the regional government, Metro, uh, to make sure that we, our plans are in conformance with the regional plans and that we actually helped move those plans forward. Uh, experts tell us that we're going to see in this region over the next 20 years the equivalent of 12 or more Hillsboroughs in this region. So think about that. And how are we going to accommodate that travel demand in our region? And what I would tell you, and I'll expand on this just a little bit more, is that it's uh, it's going to be very important to have a very good transit system in the future so that we can carry uh, our share of that growing demand uh, on the transit system. Clearly, we need more roads. We need smarter signals. We need uh, bike paths. And, and we need, uh, I think we've lost sound here. We lost mic. Let's switch to the other mic. Are we back? We back. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> let me uh, let me just just note that um, that 12 or more Hillsboroughs added to the region will be a huge challenge to all of us, and we're going to be working with all of our partners to address that the challenges of keeping us all mobile and keeping our quality of life at a good level. 
um, and not have us all uh, tied up in congestion. Um, one of the things that I would just also note is that part of what we've done historically is work with our partner agencies on big projects as well as everyday uh, local, ser local bus service. And one of the uh, initiatives that we have underway right now in Washington County area is the Southwest Corridor Plan. Metro is leading that effort, but every city and, and the county are uh, involved in that effort, and it's a very big effort to really see how we can keep mobility moving in the growing Southwest Corridor uh, with all the growth in uh, population and employment in that area. So I think if, as I go through those uh, four missions, you can see that uh, we have done a lot with public transit in this region. We're going to need to do a lot more, and we have a lot of work ahead of us. And let me begin to address some of that uh, with these remarks as well. But before I do that, I did want to just uh, also segue a bit into some of our efforts to make our agency uh, more efficient. Like all businesses, we're called upon these days to do more with less, and we take that very seriously. I would tell you that we have made some am amazing changes in, for example, benefit programs and other things in our recent uh, negotiated, uh, approved, ratified contract with the Amalgamated Transit Union. And when I was here in 2012, I probably spoke mostly about the challenges that those financial obligations um, challenged TriMet with. Um, I would tell you that we have made such great progress that, again, we feel financially stable. Uh, and for the first time, I'm leading TriMet into another budget cycle uh, where I don't have two forecasts, one with and one without a union settlement. We have, a, we have a, I think, good news for everyone at TriMet and everyone uh, associated with our work. We have a financial um, uh, stability behind us. Um, we've done a number of things in, in terms of the administrative employees, in terms of reducing um, uh, costs. Um, but again, I think the major notion is the change in health care plans and retiree health care and other benefits associated with our new contract, which um, will help us uh, be stable in the long run. So we're going to be clearly excited about working with our labor uh, um, union, with our stakeholders, and many others as we advance into the future and we'll continue to look for ways to make our system and our cost structure more efficient. I'd also note that currently we're making a number of investments in the transit system. And let me just relate to you a little bit about what we've done over the last year. In March of 2014, TriMet invested $3.1 million in new service, and that was primarily the restoration of frequent service on our major bus lines and our max uh, lines here in Washington County. Of course, that's the blue and the red line. And we added another $5.5 million of new service in September of 2014. And we'll expect to see uh, additional improvements later this year. So we are restoring our frequent service that we had to reduce the, 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 the um, uh, headways on those uh, lines during the Great Recession. So our service is back largely to where it was before the Great Recession. Um, and we've also been able to program ourselves to address our capital needs. So unlike some agencies, we do pay for our deferred maintenance. We have to. We are a agency that has to sustain our budget and our facilities and our infrastructure uh, on our own. And for example, over the last few years, we've accelerated our bus replacement program. And many of you, particularly here in Washington County, should note that our fleet looks entirely different than it did four years ago because of our accelerated bus replacement program. We've also been programming a number of improvements on the light rail lines. Many of you might, re might recall, I barely do, that our first light rail line that went from downtown Portland to Gresham is approximately 30 years old. And um, when facilities are used that hard and that frequently uh, with that many customers, 
guess what, they wear out. So we are uh, programming a number of improvements with uh, particularly federal funds oriented toward those kinds of state of good repair investments, as they're called. Um, that, that work is underway. I'd also just like to note that we, with many partners, are underway on another light rail corridor right now, and it will open on September 12th of this year, of 2015, and that, of course, is the Portland-Milwaukee light rail line, which is um, otherwise will be known as the Orange Line. That project runs from downtown Portland through South Waterfront, connecting PSU and Oregon Health Sciences University to the east side where it connects to um, OMSI across the new Tillicum Crossing, a bridge which is getting a lot of attention, uh, and then south toward southeast Portland, uh, city of Milwaukee, and Oak Grove. Um, and again, that project is um, on time and on budget. And what I would tell you is that during its construction period, really over the last four years, it has created um, 12,996 jobs, there have been 539 firms awarded contracts. 80% of those are from Oregon. 87, excuse me, 80% 80 of those firms are from Oregon. 87 firms are actually from Washington County. And we've also, uh, about 130 of the total number of firms uh, and re uh, re resulting in $170 million of revenue go to actually small businesses that are owned by women or people of color. Again, that project is on time, it's on budget, um, and it will add a whole series of new destinations to um, our, our transit system. So what I'd like to transition to now in the uh, few, next few minutes is really the future role of transit and where TriMet can go as an agency with your help and your support. The first thing I would note that transit planning in this region has a very important regional context. Uh, we have a document called the Regional Transportation Plan, which is adopted by Metro and endorsed by the local jurisdictions. There are detailed drill downs of that Regional Transportation Plan that are parts of each city's and county's comprehensive plans as well. And transit is a very important part of the, that plan as you, we look to the future. And I'll give you just sort of an example. Um, Metro has been working on a strategy they've called Climate Smart Communities, which attempts to address a state legislature's goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the future. And that plan found that the most effective strategy for reducing greenhouse gas emissions locally, that we control locally, um, was transit strategies, getting more people to use the public transit system. And so that plan actually calls for a very sub substantial increase, like a doubling of transit service over the next 20, 20 years, 30 years, excuse me, and that would potentially lead to a tripling of ridership um, with a whole series of other supported policies. Now that's probably the most aggressive vision of transit that's out there, but even our regional transportation plan shows very substantial work that's needed to be done by the transit system if we're to maintain uh, this region's mobility. And I would also note that there are uh, a number of other areas that we know we need to improve. Uh, I'll give you some examples here in Washington County. Right now there are a number of employees that work in the Tualatin industrial area. There's a very skeletal transit system uh, to serve them, actually a shuttle alignment. We also see a lot more growth in North Hillsboro in the future. So we know that we have to grow our system to serve those new areas. I would say that's even though uh, national surveys have shown that 83% of our region's workforce, which includes Clark County, are actually uh, accessible to transit. And that's a pretty high proportion uh, compared to most of our peers. But we know we can do better and we need to do better and we can look at these particular situations like the Tualatin Industrial Area or North Hillsboro and actually have cases in point. Um, so to address that, we've started a process we call brand in the, branded in the big way the future of transit. And as part of those, that effort, uh, we are developing a series of what we call service enhancement, enhancement plans. Service enhancement plans. I'm 
I'm starting to sound more like a planner than, than I sometimes like to. But the first of those, and our prototype for developing these plans, was here on the west side. Uh, Aloha, uh, Hillsboro, Beaverton, um, Forest Grove, Cornelius were all the communities that we looked at uh, in this first effort. And that plan was adopted by our board last year. And it was developed in conjunction with all of the employers and chamber groups and input from the neighborhood associations as well as the communities uh, in the in the um, the transportation planners from the communities that that are, are covered, and it, they basically came to a conclusion that the transit system that had developed over a period of time was inadequate long term to meet the needs of this county. In particular, it showed that most of our service was really oriented toward getting people from Washington County to jobs in Portland. And while that is important and not diminishing because employment in downtown Portland is continuing to grow, what was uh, quite obvious is that this is now a polycentric, a multi-centered region. And what we need to do is pay uh, equal attention to getting people to jobs from Washington County to jobs in Washington County. So within county transportation became very important and a real theme of that plan. Um, and indeed, we've had a number of uh, successes, which I'll go into in a minute. But that prototype here on the west side set a standard and a pattern that we're now taking to other parts of the region. So right now, we're working uh, in southwest, uh, the southwest sector of the region, which includes parts of Multnomah County as well as Washington County, uh, and doing exactly the same sort of outreach and transit study. And we have a draft plan that's available um, to look at and review and to comment on uh, related to that sector of the region. But I also say that we're underway in southeast Portland, in the east side of our region, and in the central portion of our region as well. So our goal is to create these maps and plans that really define where we want to go with the transit system over uh, the years ahead and we'll work with the stakeholders to actually do that. Now, since we're in the west side, let me talk a little bit about what's in that west side plan. And actually, one of the, I think, great examples out of this is that we were immediately able to put some, um, some changes into effect that were part of that long-term plan. I'll give you one ex a couple of examples. One is that we rerouted line 47 which serves um, baseline and evergreen roads. Um, and based on some work that we had done with Intel, which really mapped the location of their employees at Alt Bronlier Acres, we realized that a direct connection to the Bethany area would provide actually a very efficient route for many of those employees. And so we rerouted the route to take advantage of those connections and actually saw a 38% increase in rides on that line. Uh, upcoming, we'll see an, an extension of the Max Red Line, which now ends in Beaverton, at the Beaverton Transit Center, into the Hillsboro area, perhaps at the Fairplex area, so that we extend that service further, providing much better um, connections and coverage in that important part of the corridor that actually serves so many very big employers. Um, another example of where we uh, increased the frequency of service was line 48, which is along Cornell. And we straightened that line out a little bit, but we also mostly added frequency during the peak hours. And we actually saw a 60% increase in ridership on that line. So those are some examples of the kinds of changes that we're seeing out of these service enhancement plans. And what we will be doing is implementing them every year as resources allow us to do that. I'd also note that there are a number of complementary strategies on these service enhancement plans, but they may not be direct TriMet um, provided service. An example, uh, and actually there's two in Washington County, are community shuttles, which we help facilitate and help broker, but we actually don't provide that service. Third party nonprofit organizations uh, are providing that service. Um, and one is GroveLink in Forest Grove, which has proven to be a very popular service that links the outer neighborhoods and industrial areas of Forest Grove 
to the downtown and connect there to the Line 57, which is a frequent service line that serves Forest Grove and Cornelius. So good connections within Forest Grove, but also good connections to the regional service that TriMet provides. And I think that's a model as we move forward. Another example of that is in Tualatin, where we're providing a shuttle to that industrial area. We know that ultimately we need that to be really um, regular TriMet service, but a great uh, building block in terms of getting there is, um, is uh, to uh, start the shuttle service as a, as a building block again in terms of building ridership. Um, and so finally, the other thing that I wanted to note just in terms of complementary services is that sometimes in the transit business we get a little laden with lingo, but one of the pieces of lingo that's important to us is something called the last mile. And it's a recognition that we can't get to everybody's front door and that no matter how hard we try, um, if we start meandering our buses, we're going to lose more customers than we gain. So one of the things that we have been working on with many different um, organizations is how to bridge that last mile. And there are a lot of strategies, good pedestrian connections, uh, good bike connections. There's a couple examples that we have uh, uh, are putting in place really as we speak. We've received some grant funding for bike and rides at Beaverton Creek and Goose Hollow Mac stations. And remember, the Goose Hollow Mac station is important because it is where people from the Portland metropolitan area can connect to the light rail without having to ride your bike over the mountain. So uh, it's a very popular place to connect bikes with the light rail system. And then, of course, Beaverton Creek is uh, the closest station to the Nike campus. Um, and we're also making space for a Nike bike share project at the Beaverton Creek uh, Mac station. So those are the kinds of innovations, that, uh, partner, innovative partnerships that we see uh, in terms of bridging that last mile. Um, I'd also just note that we have received and worked with ODOT to do a number of projects along Tualatin Valley Highway, along Barber Boulevard, Highway 99. Uh, where we're looking at pedestrian improvements. And one of the things we like to say is that every transit rider is a pedestrian first and last. Another way to put that is that a transit ride is nothing but a good walk interrupted. And um, so it's very important to us that we work with our partner jurisdictions, the counties, the cities, ODOT, the road authorities, to make sure that we provide safe sidewalks and safe uh, routes uh, for our patrons to actually access um, the transit system. Now there's, there's much more ahead for Washington County. Again, the Southwest Service Enhancement Plan is a draft stage. Um, we invite your comments and thoughts about it. Tom Mills from my staff is here, who's actually the primary author of that. If you'd like further information about any of these uh, related to the future plans, you can go to trimet.org forward slash future and we'll have lots of information available for you there. I'd also note that we've had a great partnership uh, with Washington County and its communities over a long period of time. We've done lots together. I think it would be hard to imagine the Washington County that's here today without the kinds of investments we work together with, and we look forward to doing uh, so much more to serve the county in the future. And with that, I'd like to pause and, um, and uh, turn it over for potential questions. A, a transit ride is a walk interrupted, and we've just had a wonderful talk uninterrupted, and now we're ready for questions. But please, please remember, only forum members can ask questions. Please keep your questions brief. And I believe we have our first questioner ready and the camera is ready and the mic is ready and here we are. My name is uh, Bill Kroger. I'm a forum member. I want to thank you very much for coming in today. I appreciate it. I'm a fan of the MAX trains. I uh, take them quite often. Uh, I have a comment and a quick question. My comment is I hope that somebody's taking a look at the Schultz Ferry uh, corridor going all the way out to Roy Rogers because it's going to be a mess if we don't get some alternative transportation out that way. My question centers on parking. You know, in Beaverton, uh, you know, when I, when I travel, I go into Portland, for example, my options are the Sunset Transit Center, Beaverton, Beaverton Transit Center, and Millican. 
you know, at the Sunset Transit Center, Millican, most of the time there's hardly any parking, if any, and Beaverton Transit Center has no parking whatsoever. Uh, when I've talked, brought this up before, people say, well, you can take the bus. Well, I'm not going to take the bus. That adds at least a half hour to an hour to my ride, and I'm just not a bus person, and most of the people I know that ride the MAX train aren't bus people either. So I'm just wondering if the TriMet's taking a look at the parking situation. Well, um, first of all, thank you for writing, and we appreciate your, uh, your, your use of our system. Uh, related to the parking question, um, it is uh, always a balance for us. Parking is expensive to provide. Uh, and the other part of it is that some of our local land use plans may not support parking in some of the central areas which are really designated for development. Um, so, for example, that's generally the case in central Beaverton, where the city's policies would not uh, support the establishment of a park and ride um, because that road capacity and that uh, land is really intended for higher and better uses. So that's a balance we're always working with. I would say that one of the things, I can say this because I actually worked on the West Side Project that was a, a problem for TriMet, is that we did not allow the expansion of uh, parking capacity at the Sunset Transit Center. Um, but but we, <laughs> we would love to, to do that. Um, but there is, again, balancing road capacity for that's preserved for development versus what's there for park and ride. Um, and so that's a balance that we work with with our local jurisdictions on a regular basis. I know that there are some frustrations when we're uh, at capacity, uh, as we are with many of the facilities in Washington County. I would also note, though, that the Willow Creek Park and Ride and some of the others that are further out um, do have capacity, uh, including the Fairplex and Hillsboro. So there are still some opportunities to park uh, if you uh, if you if you're thinking about the whole system. I know the ride's a little longer, so that's a little inconvenient sometimes. But thank you for the question, and we are aware of the, some of the challenges that our customers face in that regard. Eric Squires, forum member. Neil, thanks for being here. I do appreciate you uh, answering the questions of the public. Uh, brief concern, then my question. When Councillor Sansusi from the City of Beaverton appeared here, I believe in May, he mentioned that uh, the City of Beaverton has to look at uh, other options outside of TriMet in order to serve growth areas such as South Cooper Mountain. I live near South Cooper Mountain in a rural residential area that's within the TriMet district. One of my concerns is all the jobs that I've had recently have taken me north towards 26 and not towards the hub and spoke centric system of TriMet. Mm -hmm. And that as someone who's been tracking the land use, all the proposed new routes seem to be connecting to an east-west grid. And I'm wondering, from a management theory, shouldn't transit services be available um, when areas like South Cooper Mountain and River Terrace um, uh, start to build out? Or are we going to have to wait to what Beaverton said, and that is uh, for future transit while development occurs? Well, that's an excellent question. Again, thank you for your, your question and your hospitality here at the forum. Um, what I would tell you is that the South Cooper Mountain, Shoals Ferry, as mentioned by the previous questioner, are all areas that are aimed at with our um, service enhancement plans. And there is service proposals for each of those areas. Um, and the other thing that I would say is that our model is now more north-south, to add more north-south service to what has been traditionally more east-west. That's my notion about a polycentric center uh, uh, system as opposed to one oriented just to downtown Portland. And so we recognize that. Um, there is no question that a better system, and I'll give, use an example within our region, if you look at the inner city of Portland between 82nd Avenue and the Willamette River, there's a good grid of north-south bus rides, routes as well as east-west bus routes, and that allows people to really go any direction with one transfer and really hit any direction within that area. We see that as a great model for Washington County, but one of the problems is Washington County is still in the development of north-south roads throughout uh, its, its area. And so there are some challenges in terms of meeting all of that, those expectations. Um, that said, we think the uh, service enhancement plan for the west side does a good job of beginning to define good north-south connections that allow more uh, polycentric or more destinations within Washington County 
to be matched with home uh, des or origins in Washington County. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Virginia Bruce, forum member. I um, am interested in seeing TriMet hold Washington County and the developers feet to the fire a little bit more in providing pedestrian access in new development. They design their developments for, to sell houses and not to provide a circulation route that will allow their people to walk to the closest transit hub. And you guys sign off on those plans. You have a chance to comment on them every time they're submitted. And TriMet generally just puts some kind of a rubber stamp on those plans. I would really like to see TriMet make those developers design their housing developments to make it easier and more attractive and, and more uh, desirable to walk to the closest bus stop rather than to jump in their cars. And um, I hope you do that. I'd also like to comment about the Sunset Transit Center. Um, Sun Sunset Transit Center area residents can't park there. We are told because people from all around the region, as he said, sneak in there and park. And I've been suggesting for several years that one floor of that parking garage be allocated for local residents, a card key system, you know, a request system, card key system could be implemented and allow us to park in our own transit center. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for your question. And thank you for using our system. I would also uh, agree with you about the importance of those pedestrian facilities. Um, we have been trying to address it more on a policy standard so that we get uh, good policies embedded in the local plans, whether they be Beaverton's plans or Washington County's plans, so that those standards are very clear and upfront uh, for everybody um, to follow. That's been our approach rather than commenting one-on-one -on, -one on each, each of the developments because, frankly, that's not what we do as an agency. We really provide transit service and it, it pulls us away from some of our core mission. And we always have choices of, of, um, of uh, priorities in terms of how we allocate our time. Um, that said, we are the strongest advocate you could find for good pedestrian facilities and improved pedestrian facilities. I think they're becoming more and more important. Um, and the other thing that I would say is that the marketplace itself the developers themselves are beginning to realize this. Uh, maybe this isn't happening everywhere, but it is happening in many, many places where those connections to transit and those connections to the um, uh, uh, pedestrian system are, are being valued by um, the developers because the people they're marketing to are valuing those. And that's, uh, I think, the ultimate answer is the consumers have to demand that as well as the neighbors. So we appreciate your pitching in on that with us, and we'll see if we can sharpen our activities as well in that regard. Thank you. Steve Buckstein, forum member. Um, you mentioned some um, feeder systems like in Forest Grove, and as you know, I think it's about six communities have opted out of TriMet because they felt that there were, was not good service everywhere from Sandy to Wilsonville. Um, in the past, you've had private companies doing feeder service in Washington County and at least one, I think, on the east side that the unions objected to. And you know, these were for-profit companies that you contracted with, the TriMet contracted with, to help people get to TriMet transit centers. But the unions didn't allow that, objected to that, and the cost then rose substantially for TriMet. I'm wondering, under your new, as you call it, landmark labor agreement, if you have more flexibility now to provide or to offer um, to, to bring in private companies to provide that kind of feeder service that TriMet can't afford to provide itself. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> well, first of all, I would say that uh, we do contract right now, for example, all of our lift service, which is the paratransit system that offers door-to-door -door service for uh, people, for seniors and people with disabilities who can't use the fixed route transit system, that is all contracted service. Um, and I would also note that using uh, certain federal funds, uh, there is a category of federal funds called JARC or Job Access Reverse Commute um, that allowed us to directly target um, services like the Twalton Shuttle and the uh, Forest Grove Grove Link. 
And so that's how we've been able to do that. We still have some restrictions related to our labor agreement in terms of where uh, contracting can be done. I would note that the labor agreement does have a provision uh, that deals with um, sort of startup service, which is we can for a certain period of time run a contracted service and after a certain period of time, if it's grown to a level of productivity, number of riders that makes sense for TriMet to pick on, we would take it on as a, uh, as a regular TriMet service. So I think there's a combination of, uh, of partnerships and uh, other, um, uh, other funding sources outside of the TriMet, normal TriMet flow that will allow us to expand that contracting opportunity uh, in those contracting opportunities in the future. But I think it's important to note that that only works if the basic transit system is a strong one. Grovelink wouldn't make much sense if the Line 57 was lousy service. So we've got to make sure the Line 57 is really great service so that those from Forest Grove can connect to it and use it as their lifeline to the rest of Washington County and the jobs and uh, economic opportunities that follow. Um, and similarly throughout the system. So there are some of these augmentation services, uh, of services that I, we, we do envision and are outlined in our service enhancement plans. But I would also note that um, that's combined with strengthening the core system uh, with better frequency and better route structure uh, so that the whole system rises, so that the whole fleet rises with the water, if you will. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Richard Kidd, and I'm a um, forum member. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation today. I really appreciate that, and especially the comments you, you've made about Line 57 and Grovelink. Grovelink has uh, improved uh, tremendously and is far exceeding the expectations of what uh, we, we thought of it in the first place. Even though a lot of the um, traffic on Grovelink does not go directly to 57, it is a feeder. Uh, in my case, uh, Grove Link to 57 to Blue Line to Red Line to the airport adds about two and a half hours. So my, biggest, my biggest concern is uh, in reduction of VMTs, and I think that in the case of Forest Grove, the RTP kind of shorts it a little bit in looking at it. Uh, I've been an advocate of uh, high capacity transit to Forest Grove for over 20 some years, and we've done some studies and looked at that. And my question to you will be, uh, what is uh, uh, the possibility that you think of ex uh, expediting um, uh, high capacity transit to Forest Grove in that there's already a 70-foot uh, wide right-of-way for six and a half miles to connect it to Hillsboro that's in public ownership? So uh, comment on, on uh, expediting the um, mass transit and then where before I was always talking light rail, I'm using the term mass transit because there are some options. But 20-some uh, stops to the, from my house to the, to the transit center is uh, a non-working and reducing my BM BMTs. Mayor Kitt, thank you for your question and um, your contributions to Forest Grove and the Washington County community for a long period of time pleased to have the opportunity to work with you in many different settings. Um, what I would first of all say, I think that, um, that connections, uh, high capacity connections to Forest Grove and Cornelius is actually a very important um, element that we really do need to advance in the regional transportation planning efforts. Now, what, what, not to sound too bureaucratic, but the way that these things are set up is that there's this agency called Metro, and they actually prioritize the corridors that we work on as TriMet and other partners. And so the two corridors that we're working on right now are the Southwest Corridor, as I mentioned, and the other is the uh, Powell Division Corridor that is uh, now uh, planned to be a bus rapid transit line between um, PSU, South Waterfront, and OHSU, across the new Tillicum Crossing Bridge, down Powell, ultimately to Division, and Mount Hood Community College. Um, and that actually is a pretty interesting proposal, not detailed yet, but underway, the work is underway, and I think that we can learn a lot from that as we think about connections within Western Washington County. Um, for example, one of the out recommendations of the West Side Service Enhancement Plan was indeed to advance high-capacity transit 
along Tualatin Valley Highway, ultimately through to Cornelius and Forest Grove. So exactly how that happens is obviously the work of a study that needs to be done. Uh, but we have laid some groundwork in the West Side Service Enhancement Plan um, to begin to outline that that, in our view, is a very high demand corridor that can have some very high potential of transit growth over a period of time. So not a, de not a definitive answer, but one that what I think lay that there's some things in the works right now that lays solid groundwork for advancing that corridor in the future. And with your help and many others, we can all uh, weigh in with that, uh, with, with Metro in terms of the priority of those corridors. Greetings and, and thank you so much for being here, Mr. McFarland. Uh, John McWilliams, former member, uh, former uh, TriMet uh, driver, um, 10 good years anyway. And so um, I thank you for being here. And uh, I'm really pleased to hear that the red line is going to be extended further out to the west. Uh, I think that that'll maybe relieve some of the strain on Sunset Transit Center because people will, instead of driving all the way in, will save on their gas and and get a little bit faster service. Also, um, we're having a great thing happen right now. Fuel is uh, a little bit less, uh, so I would think that TriMet are, that uh, a lot of, they're saving a little bit of money because the fuel for the buses is quite a bit less. So how are you using that? Uh, secondly, um, also uh, we had an election not too long ago, and now we have a different Congress. Uh, is that money gonna be available that we have had in the past uh, quite as fluently, anyway, to uh, help out to, to uh, the construction of f further services and lines. So, very good questions, and thank you very much, and thank you for your service to TriMet. Uh, we, um, one of the things I would just note uh, to take in reverse those questions is uh, there is a new Congress, and we have some uncertainty at the federal level on federal transportation funding. The, uh, what we call the Surface Transportation Act is actually due to expire later this spring. So Congress will have to take some action to extend that and figure out a way to fund it. Um, and there are, needless to say, big challenges uh, related to that. Probably some pretty major disagreements between the parties about how. But one of the interesting things about infrastructure uh, in particular, uh, transit's part of that bigger infrastructure picture is that it tends to be nonpartisan at its core. Uh, as it's often been said, there aren't democratic freeways and Republican freeways. There are freeways that we all use. And so uh, same with roads, same with transit systems. And so um, at its core, I'm actually hopeful that we will see an extension of that, um, of that authorization act. I would not predict a large increase in funding, but I would say that uh, status quo is likely. And that's certainly been the case over the last, um, really, six years as uh, Congress has sort of inched along in terms of uh, extending those programs over a period of time. Um, help me with the other questions. Uh, fuel, fuel. So indeed, uh, diesel costs are down, and we're thrilled about that. Uh, if you take the diesel cost today and extend that out over an annual basis, it's a savings of something on the order of $2 million a year right now for us. Uh, needless to say, we're Oregon's largest consumer of diesel fuel. Um, so that's a, that's a big chunk of money. And actually, our intention will be to put that both into uh, accelerated bus replacement and capital, because that's a, a good place to use it. Um, but we also have been have learned from the School of Hard Knocks. I've been in this business now, actually, um, working TriMet this February will be my 24th anniversary. Fuel goes down, and almost as surely it will go up sometime. So one has to be somewhat cautious about spending money that we won't have in the future. But nonetheless, um, those savings are welcome and will be well invested in the system in the future. John Blackman, former member. Fuel costs are low because the Saud family wants them low. Do you enter into futures contracts on fuel? The answer to that is um, no. Uh, about it. Um, it's, a, it's a actually, here, here's my view about it, and actually I, I am looking at this again. 
Um, but historically, I've said if I could predict fuel costs, I probably belong on Wall Street rather than Center Street uh, in terms of the place where our, um, our, our headquarters are. Um, but that said, it, it is worthy of thinking about given this new environment. So I appreciate Yeah, that. I didn't mean uh, speculating on them, but yep. you are a user. Absolutely. So you might want to cover your bases on that. Also, as a former Max writer, first a compliment and then a however. The compliment is a lack of background music. <laughs> <laughs> the however is the endless announcements. Each car has a reader board that tells you when the next stop is or where it is. The side of the train could be augmented by a little arrow next to that reader board pointing to the left or to the right. I would like you to think about that. Thank you. That's actually an excellent question. I appreciate that. Um, we are always balancing. Uh, for example, we often hear from uh, people in mobility devices that others are taking up the spots on the train and so they would like more announcements, and then we try to balance that with uh, general uh, environmental considerations, which is none of us really want to be assaulted on a regular basis with all those messages. So we look for the right balance. Sounds like, from your opinion, we've gone too far one side, so we'll look at that. I, 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 I appreciate that thought. Hi, uh, Phil Nelson, forum member. And I appreciate you're dealing with a number of counties, you're dealing with cities, and uh, various municipal entities here. And there's been, of course, news about local initiatives and voters of communities being asked to be in a position, apparently, to approve or not approve uh, TriMet systems. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about how TriMet is legally structured and its authority in this regard and its jurisdiction and how uh, these measures may affect your uh, future planning and if you see anything being done on the legal front uh, or necessary to maybe uh, correct that situation. I appreciate the question very much. Um, so just a little bit about the structure of TriMet. It was actually created by a state statute um, and actually that statute was enacted by, um, believe it or not, a city of Portland uh, ordinance at one point in time. The agency was created in 1969. It was uh, created because uh, you, any of you who go back that far will remember that a lot of the private bus companies, actually all of the private bus companies, were going bankrupt and that the region was going to be left without service um, unless TriMet could, uh, or unless somebody could step in and um, resolve that, that, that situation. And so the state legislature created that, uh, created the statute that created TriMet uh, in 1969. We are governed by a seven member board of directors um, that uh, are from districts. The district we're in is represented by actually the board chair at this point in time, uh, Bruce Warner. Um, and um, those seven uh, members are uh, nominated by the governor and confirmed by the state senate. Our boundaries are, were es essentially started off to be the full three county area. And over time, um, as Mr. Buxton noted, the, the boundaries have uh, coalesced around the more urban parts of the region. Uh, so some of, for example, Sandy and Mount Hood, and um, you, you know, a lot of people don't remember, may remember, we actually used to have bus service uh, up to uh, Timberline Lodge uh, at the very outset of TriMet's existence. Um, but nonetheless, um, we have shrunk it to really become the uh, service provider, the transit service provider for uh, the urban parts of those counties. Um, and so we do have a, um, a, a limited charter that is really written by the state uh, legislature in terms of powers and uh, taxing authorities and that sort of thing. Uh, and again, as I noted, our primary revenue source right now is a payroll tax on employers. Um, so I think that's a little bit. In terms of the um, measures, it's a very important topic that I think we're going to have to pay attention to. Um, but I think I would raise a very general question, which is how do we govern ourselves with initiative? Um, we are a representative government and we do um, ask our representatives to be informed and make informed decisions about their, our, our topics like transportation. And I would hate to see that general model um, interfered with in a great way. Um, 
We do know that there are some uh, initiatives right now in place that have been put in place in, in Tigard and Tualatin, which asked for a vote before we um, asked the city for support for, for example, financial support for high capacity transit. Um, we're, we'll obviously meet that challenge if there is indeed a plan that's advanced out of the regional conversations uh, to, um, to ask those voters for their approval. But I think it's, um, you know, one has to be pretty careful about how one monitors these things so that we aren't trying to govern ourselves on every little detail with initiative. I think that's a dangerous trait, a trend. I say that as a citizen as well as somebody who is trying to map an aggressive future for a great transit, great region and a great transit system. Hello, Mr. McFarland. I'm Marilyn McWilliams and I'm on the board of Tualatin Valley Water District and also sat on uh, impact for the last four years working on this climate smart strategies program and one of the things that we discussed is how young people um, are much more accepting of mass transit and expect to have it there a lot of them choose not to drive not to get their license not to spend money on a car and so on and I think in Portland it's pretty easy for them to get around but we're seeing a lot of these young people working out here <laughs> and having trouble getting back and forth. So I'm wondering, is TriMet focusing on the fact that we have kind of a generation shift? We've got people who don't want to have cars, want to live in small places, and uh, want to be able to take transit. Well, thank you for the question. And it's a really important uh, demographic information that we're facing. I think from a transit perspective, there's actually two big changes. One is People my age are growing older and heading toward retirement, which generally means I'll be using the transit system even more, though that's given that I rely on the transit system every day, uh, may not be the, um, the, a perfect example. Um, but the other thing is this change in the millennials, um, and we're watching those dynamics really carefully. The, one of the questions is, do they exhibit the same behavior they're exhibiting today when they're 10 years older from, uh, than today? And so that will be something that we'll be watching very carefully. But one of the things I would note is that here in Washington County, there are a number of communities being developed and built that really accommodate the kind of lifestyle that you're talking about, these young people really uh, looking for. Um, if you've been around the Renko Transit Station, you'll, your jaw drops at the uh, intensity of development that is occurring there. And it's particularly just to focus on the kind of um, uh, renters, potentially, or residents um, that are looking for that kind of lifestyle. Uh, there's a new development at 4th and Main in downtown Hillsborough, and actually I had one of the Hillsborough City Councilors come up to me and he's shaking his head because he sees the residents come out to the MAC station. They're obviously headed to Intel or Nike because even though the normal thought might be from downtown Hillsborough, um, to drive, but for these, um, this cadre of our population, that's not a choice they want to make. And they want to have productive time on public transit rather than unproductive time in transit. So it's a very important trend that we have to watch. And I think what one of the things that as uh, impact um, obviously focuses on is that we really need to focus on the plethora of choices for different people so people can make different choices about their lifestyle we aren't all going to want to live in the same kind of situation um, that we historically have. And I think more choice is going to lead to a richer region. So thank you for your question. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McFarland, thank you very much for a candid and informative talk. Ordinarily, folks and folks at home, this is where we would announce upcoming programs. And I will. We have a few interesting programs coming up. On uh, January 26th, we will be listening to the Tualatin Valley Water District folks. On February 2nd, we will be talking in, uh, with Washington County land use people. And I would like to tell you about next week. Next week is Martin Luther King Day. And we will be having a program. We're expecting to. But right now, we have three separate organizations in competition for that time. I am thus unable to announce our program next week. As such, all members of the forum, and remember, forum membership's available to everyone. 
All members of the forum, please watch your email. You will get an announcement. And please, those of you who aren't members, please check us out at our website, www.WashingtonCountyForum.org. If there's any further questions, we'll have them after it closes. I am always impressed at the quality of the questions I hear every week. For those two, 3,000 people watching at home, it's about time you came and asked some questions. Thank you, folks, very much. Okay. I might as well. I was up here. Uh, Chris Leslie, four member. Uh, you started in uh, 1998 in research and development. And what do you see in research and development today that would be changed from the past? Folks, we're off camera, but there's one more question if you guys are interested. We're off camera, but there's another question. In terms of changes to the transit industry, um, you know, I would be honest that I think we're more into the re small refinements rather than major changes. But one of the things that we're really interested in is connecting with services like Uber, uh, which is another solution to that last mile question um, that can be, um, you know, that can be available to people. So I think one of the other thing that we're interested in is in things like bike share as a potential future for some uh, elements of our population. So I think one of the things we're, we're interested in is seeing how mobility can be pieced together, not just with transit, but with a lot of other services that might be provided by the private sector. Um, th the other thing that I would just note is technology is changing. And one of the things that we're anxious, in, um, anxious to begin to try is um, some electric buses. Um, and there are some interesting innovations underway. The, the cost premium for electric buses is diminishing uh, on an everyday basis, just like with vehicles. Um, and so we are, uh, for example, uh, applying for grants that might help us get a kickstart in that area. And I think that would be a very interesting innovation for our region as well. Right. I have more questions, but I think we're losing the people. Our crowd. Yeah. <laughs> But thank you, Mr. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.